Hello and welcome to the Stringer Podcast number 36. Jake Goldsby on the podcast this week, and it's a bit of a change. We actually, uh, this week was planned to be a crossover episode, but if you've been following along on Twitter, we had a bit of another exciting announcement where we announced that we have now a third podcast joining the Stringer family. Straight from the presses. Straight straight from the presses. Hot off the press. Uh, this was just recorded, and it's coming into your ears. Uh, we have the Sportsfeld podcast is returning, and, and they're launching under the Stringer umbrella, which is really, really exciting. So Jake Goldsby, who I've known uh, for four or five years, uh, came in, and we catch up. We talk about the podcast. We talk about it relaunching, and we kind of go back through you know the different phases of his career. Uh, it's really interesting. It's one of my favorite conversations yet, and I think you're going to love it. But Sportsfeld, you got to get on board. It launches January 29th. It's a sports podcast about nothing. That's literally the bio on their Twitter page. If you want to see it yourself, you can find them at Sportsfeld on Twitter or at Sportsfeld on Instagram. Now, the interesting thing has now happened. A football podcast, which as you know, we launched a couple weeks ago, it plays it drops new episodes on Mondays. Sportsfeld is now moving into the Tuesday slot, which means this is the last time you're going to hear us on Tuesday morning because we are going to be moving to Wednesdays. I know what you're saying, it's a digital landscape, why does it even matter? Just put it out whenever, blah 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 blah. But you know what? We we don't want to like cannibalize listenership here. Like we want to give you your 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 drive in or your walk or subway in. With Stevie and KJ on Monday, then with Jake and Zoobs on Tuesday, and you, if you are not sick of us yet, you can put up with me on Wednesday. I just want to control the week, that's all. I just want to take over the world, Pinky. (laughs) (laughs) All right, before we get to Jake, it's the Stringer Big Weekend, like it is, well, not right now, but coming up is the Stringer Big Weekend, like every weekend. Friday, January 25th, Senses Fail. There's a band name you haven't heard in a long time. Dylan didn't even know who they were. Who are they? They're great. They're from the golden age of emo, punky, rocky, loud music. Senses fail, 6.30 p.m. I believe that must be the Doors time because I can't imagine them going on stage that early. Phoenix Concert Theater, 410 Sherburn Street. Keep that in your brain because it's going to come back. If you want tickets for this concert, head on over to SeatGiant.ca and use promo code STRINGER and you'll be able to get yourself a couple tickets to go see Senses Fail wear all the black eyeliner and save yourself a couple bucks off your purchase. Oh, you can use a couple bucks to buy your black eyeliner. There you go. Which is perfect. Actually, if we think about it, Dylan, remind me. I've got this photo of me ahead of a concert. Where, have you seen this one already? You know, I have not seen any of these photos. I am wearing, I believe I have eye makeup. I 100% have black nail polish on. Do you have a mohawk in this one? I do not have a mohawk in this one. I have normal hair. Uh, I thought I was being cool. Saturday, January 25th, Drunken Cinema presents Scream in 35mm. And for me, this is worth... Drunken Cinema is really fun. This is worth seeing it just because they have the 35mm print. It's at 9.30pm at Review Cinema. Or Review Cinema? Review. 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 Review is what I said the first time around. 400 Ronces Vales. Tickets are $15. And you can get yours by going to reviewcinema.ca. Drunken Cinema invites you to Woodsboro, a.k.a. Review Cinema. I can't get over that word. To celebrate Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's slasher film that revived the horror genre in the late 90s. Come experience the thrills and the chills for the first time or for the hundredth time with us at Review Cinema with a great crowd. There will be popcorn, wine, Beer, that's the best part. Trailers, obviously. A theme cocktail and prizes to be given away. I love all those things. Some people put candy in the popcorn and just throw some beer in the popcorn. <laughs> that's gross. Don't do what Dylan says. Sunday, January 27th, Smash Wrestling 7. Any given Sunday. 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 2 p.m. Phoenix Concert Theater. I told you that was going to be coming back. So you go in East End, Phoenix. West End, Review Cinema. East End, Phoenix. It's just like a nice book. It's a great book. We're bookending your weekend with the Phoenix Concert Theater. Again, that's 410 Sherburn Street. Tickets are $25. That's right. You heard it here first. $25. Smash-Wrestling.com. Smash Wrestling's first Toronto show of 2019 promises to be a big one. Film for the Fight Network. Any given Sunday 7 features barbed wire hell match. That sounds terrible. Smash Wrestling's championship match. And a Smash Wrestling tag team championship match. 
Phoenix Concert Theater, 2 p.m. Smash. Is Hulk smash. involved? No, I doubt it. I don't ah, know. Hulk damn. smash. Remember, if you don't like our ideas, I completely understand. You don't going to be mean about it, but you can do one of two things. Reach out to us with what you've got coming up, and we'll be happy to promote it at Stringer Podcast on Twitter or events at thestringer.ca, or you can go to seatgiant.ca on your own. You don't need me directing you, and figure out what you want to do on your weekend. They have uh, tickets for concerts, sporting events, theater, live shows, comedy, and much, much more. And remember, you can use promo code STRINGER to save yourself a couple dollars off your purchase. I think we did that pretty well, Dill. I think it went well. It moved like really smoothly. And so we're going to go from this smooth talking into the smooth talking of Jake Goldsby. Wow, that was smooth. Oh, you know, I'm just butter. At Jay Goldsby on Twitter. At Jake Goldsby on Instagram. Dylan, there's only one thing remaining that separates us from where we are right now to getting the other side of the break where we get Jake Goldsby. Do you know what that is? Uh, I think I know this one. I'm pretty sure I know this Give one. Give it to me! Um, uh, z- Hurry up! Zax? Yes! <laughs> We've literally never thought about it. It's, I used to, when we recorded it, uh, when we're in the other office upstairs, I positioned myself so I could see the Rogers box. So again, it's all because of time. And half of that's like, part of it's because I don't want to waste people's time because I can talk forever. Yes. yes. But then also another part of it's like realizing I'm at an hour but the thing I never wanted to get to like yeah. I never moved the conversation fast enough to get where I wanted to go with it and of course. that's very me like <laughs> very me where I'll screw that up Jake Goldsby on the podcast I just I get talking and I keep talking and then I always ignore the person across or we it's all it's we will deal with whatever you want taken and, out oh, I'm fine. after the fact thanks for coming by, this was like really last minute. Yeah, I know. I asked you last week, like the end of last week. I was like, "Is there any days uh, you can do?" Because we want to. We're recording this on Monday evening, and it's going out <laughs> Tuesday morning. Well, as someone who doesn't have anything to do, this no, works, this works very well. <laughs> uh, first of all, Sportsfeld's coming back. Sportsfeld is coming back. We are launching. I guess we launched today. Technically, right? technically New, today, our first like legitimate. New episode is t- coming out Tuesday, I think. Like next Tuesday, the 29th. A week to 29th. 29th. And yeah, it's fun times. I imagine the idea of like getting the band back together, like that idea where you're like, wow, I'm doing a thing I haven't done in a long time. But at the same time, it feels exactly how it did years yeah, ago. Yeah. Like we've been, we've like occasionally sort of talked about it here and there, been like, hey, maybe we should do something with this and then obviously nothing came of it and then you know with you guys coming be like hey we actually have space to like record a podcast we have it's a room not, we have room and actual we, microphones we have four and, uh, microphones yeah we we're like you know what yeah let's let's there's you know why not give it a shot and see where we kind of end up and if it you know if it fails it's it, whatever it fails it's, then, it won't fail it won't what do you mean but, Dude, no i'm it saying fails, it won't that's the I'm, worst thing i've heard all day I'm you're like pessimist. we just launched i'm like a, you're killing me i'm already. trying to temper my excitement <laughs> Five years ago today. Five years ago today was episode one of Sportsfeld. Sportsfeld launched. What was it? I know it's funny. As I told you not two minutes ago, I'm like, yeah, we'll talk about Sportsfeld <laughs> at the end. And I'm like, hey, guess no, what? Woof. Let's I'm going to lead with let's it. Let's do it. Where was it birthed? Like, what What was the, what were you itching to do? And was it a you thing? Was it a Zoob no, thing? No, it was, it was like, a Zoob's thing. It was Zoob's sort like, of. Jake, I need you. Zoob's baby. And we were at the score at the time, both of us. And it was kind of. You know, we weren't excelling as creatively, perhaps, as we yep, felt we, should, we could be. Yep. And so Zoobs came up with the idea that he wanted to start his own sort of podcast in an attempt sort of within the score brand. Yep. And we actually recorded a pilot episode even before this. Because the score heard. was doing Yeah, the score was doing podcasts at the time. But then at a certain point, they got out of them. Yeah, and now they're back into them. Now they're back into them. But yeah, it's so very this, confusing. This is at the time when they were still doing podcasts, yeah. but they were definitely... We didn't know at the time, but they were definitely sort of on the way out of doing podcasts. 
Or maybe we did know at the time. I forget. Yeah. You're but, like, I've got a great idea. You're going to stop doing podcasts. Let's launch a well, podcast. I, I mean, they had a podcast studio. Might right. as well use it. Yeah. Did and it look so, like this, though? Did they have a Molson Canadian fridge sitting behind holding a no, phone? No, but it was very clock? like glass room and fancy I, and very nice. But then. Uh, Aspirations. Yeah. So it was, it was Zoob's thing for sure. And he brought a few of us on yeah. to start. And then uh, it just kind of snowballed from there, <laughs> I guess. And then we kind of realized. Early on, I forget what episode it was, but like within the first five or six, yeah. there was an episode where I think Jonah Berenbaum, who sold the score, was the guest. And it was just like a very sad <laughs> episode. And we were like, oh, there's our brand. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's great. And then we, it just kind of went from there. And we were reali- sad 20 somethings. Yeah, yeah. And we realized we sort of had a call it a unique voice. Yeah. Uh, in sports media, at least I think we do. Yeah. We're not right. going to quote stats. No, we're not going <laughs> to. I remember we had. Uh, you give everything the eye test. Yeah, we had uh, Steve Slidkowski from Pop, who actually made our lovely theme song uh, f- for this return on the show when we were doing it, like two years ago, and he came in with like a binder of notes and stats, or not a binder, a notebook of like notes and stats that we were going to talk about. And we Boy. were like, "This is the most prepared anyone's ever no. been for this show, including yeah. us." For yeah, exactly. I definitely there was a period when I was at the score and when we were doing backhand shelf where I like really mm-hmm. tried to pretend to be like a guy who knows what he's yeah. talking about because yeah. I felt that's what you have to bring that to the required. table. Which in retrospect, it would have been maybe even better if I hadn't yeah, done that right. but i remember like every day in the show i'd like have written down like some guys like corsi yeah. from the night before right and i was saying the numbers like i knew what corsi even means no i, I don't no idea i have no idea what i, I think means. i sort of get it now but i don't know how to count whenever it's in percentages i, I don't know i don't at all yeah and, like i don't want to like disparage the stats mix i do, no, not I do think it tells a valid story and i think it's clear that you know advanced stats are useful yeah. uh, but i just don't it's just not it's as much not, fun and i don't understand it like i got i failed grade 11 math like i'm not gonna know really yeah my teacher just passed me because he was like you're not gonna use this in your life my teacher grade 11 math uh because i decided i was a weird kid like first i'm a weird adult but yeah. I, was, I was probably a weirder kid grade 11 math i decided i was going to take a full course load which meant no lunch oh my god which meant one more course than everyone else right and I did that both because I wanted more spares in grade 12. So I took a full course load and my teacher told me the second week she came up to – and math was like my thing. Like numbers, they usually stick. She's like, you will fail this class. And I'm like, you can't say that. We're two <laughs> weeks in. And so I then at that point decided because I'm really rational to do no homework – and no assignments, and I'll pass because our tests were worth sixty percent or whatever. Uh, and I'll pass on tests alone, and I work? did. I pass on tests alone, but then I was like, "What was I trying to prove to myself when I ended up with like a fifty-four when I had been <laughs> honor student range well, for that, everything you else? Got that credit? I got though. the credit. I was talking to Sean this morning, and we were talking about something with money, and I thought. My name's like, there's 10 months in the year. That's how we calculate value over time. And then Sean was like, no, it's this. I was like, what? Wait, no, it's not. And then I was like, oh, right. I, I like, that's how I work. No one counts. I November, forget December. how many months there are in like, the year. I'm not going to calculate shot attempts. No, like, it doesn't. It can't, even can't, count, be bothered. can't even tell time. Can't be bothered. I was trying to um, think back. When did we meet? When do you remember his first meeting? You I, were definitely at. MLSC. I was. It was before Chris. We'll call him. Call him Chris. Yeah, we'll call him Chris. Through. Uh, would, I think it would have been through Chris. Yeah. Through Chris or Sean. Because I, I knew feel Sean. Like I met you before Sean went to MLS. I could be wrong. No, because Sean came before Chris. Right. Sean kind right. of brought Chris. Chris. Was in Ottawa. You're right. Oh, so, I'm saying too much about so, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of people named Chris are in Ottawa. That's I've, true. I've, I've visited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, no, no, no. great Chris is in definitely Ottawa. Definitely the same. So I remember Chris threw a New Year's Eve party, and I already knew you. That oh, night. and we were yeah. That I was when Chris you. and I were roommates. I think that was still saying too much. Oh, you were Chris. living there. Yeah, I lived there. Oh, but was, I definitely knew. I knew you way before. I knew that. you way before that. So I that, and I think that was like twenty December thirty first, twenty fourteen. Yeah, it was no. That 15. would have been 15. 15. So that means um, we've known each other at least four years. Yeah. So I say this really gently, very gently. 
I attended at a young age theater school. Okay. And and that I, I that was something I thought. And I say gently is because I A wasn't good, B didn't go anywhere, and C I think my parents were like you're not worth the effort Saturday mornings or whatever. I had to go Saturdays and I had to be there for like 7 a.m. and it was like 30 minute drive from my parents' place. And I remember like you kind of figure something out in yourself. For me, I just wanted people to look at me. I think yeah. that, that was the only thing. Going back, so if we've known each other at least four years, I don't think it was until I, you did the first play in Montreal that I was like, oh, you're an actor. And they're like, yeah, yeah, Jake's an actor. You didn't know that? I'm like, no. You're like, you don't know any of the stuff he's done? I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm to be, sorry. To be, no, to be fair, I like didn't. It's only recently that I've been like more comfortable sort of talking about mm-hmm. it. So like when we met, there's no – like. A, I think I was still at the score, and well, yeah, so probably. I was, wasn't working as an actor. Yeah. And B, I don't introduce myself. <laughs> yeah, like, imagine that. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm an actor. <laughs> I'm an actor. I'm an a- you please, may have seen please me. Please ask me about it. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine there is at least one part of this continent in which that is very prevalent. Yeah. Where you go around, you're like, oh, hi. Uh, my name is Clarence. I'm an actor. Yeah, there's definitely like – there's you can see him on Twitter sometimes. Like my uh, – Guy, a guy I know will sometimes retweet them because he just, it's funny. Like people just tweet like, "Oh, tough day at the auditions today." No. <laughs> it's like, no, you, no, it wasn't. It's, it's not the, the audition. Yeah, it's the not, one. It's not like for the week. It's not that. There's stressful. a there's a comedian and in his set, he he does this bit where acting is this one thing that people can profess to do. Without ever having it done it before in their life professionally. Yeah. Like no one can say I'm a banker but really be serving coffee. But people can profess to be of this profession. They can yeah. tell people I am an actor. And they're like, oh, yeah, what have you been in? And you're like, well, you know, I'm working on my portfolio. Which is, which is part of the reason why I find that like certain actors who like find acting like it's really it's really important. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Come on, guys. How did you get in? Everybody when, chill out. How old were you when you first got into it? I was it? five. Yeah, I don't really know the whole story. It was, as far as I know, I talked a lot Mm -hmm. as a child, which I know is shocking. (laughs) Uh, And people told my parents that it just might be something I'd enjoy. And it was always very, like, open. It was always like, you know, it wasn't a stage parent kind Mm -hmm. of situation. You have to do it. It was like, if you want to do this, do it. If it's fun, it's fun. And then it turned out I really enjoyed it. And it turned out that I was pretty successful as a younger person were you on stage was it theater first for you i can't remember there was a play very early but i don't remember if that was first First, or if i think commercials were first and then i can't remember if it was like film or theater next but it was all kind of in the same like year when i started i uh was in the sears fashion show Okay. Uh, you might recognize me. I was catalog page three forty six. Five years now. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Uh, I look basically the same, just with more <laughs> facial hair. Same. Actually. Uh, I can't imagine having this part of your life that played on probably your next. I'm going to say the next ten years, right? Your early start played at least into your oh, at I, least into your next ten, if not fifteen years. Absolutely. Of just what your career? Do you call it a career when you're a kid? I guess so, I guess yeah. your career. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I would. But then not remember how it started. Like, I remember how I got into sports. Yeah. I rem- but, but you're just I mean, like, kind I of... Vague, I have very vague memories of, like, my first audition. Mm. But I couldn't tell you what it was oh, for. Oh, the audition. Like, uh, like, it's a hard day of auditions today. Hard day. <laughs> <laughs> Jake tweets it at five years old. If I, if I ever become a person who's tweeting, like, oh, What's it's so up, tough dude? being an actor. Just... <laughs> Shoot me in the head. Uh, you're surrounded by a bunch of people. I'm sure will line up before yeah, me. Please never let me be that person. From there, so you're five at that point. Yeah. Right. How much longer between, like, how much of that before life starts to get disrupted? I say that nicely. I mean, but I it's was, like, does it start? I had a. I would say I had a weird. And maybe it's a Canadian thing. Maybe mm-hmm. it's just because it was 20 years, like 25 mm-hmm. years ago. But like, I never really found it all that disruptive Hmm. and i don't know if that i've wondered this as well because Mm -hmm. like yeah when i think about it it should have Mm -hmm. disrupted things maybe it's because like i don't know i started so young that Mm -hmm. it just was it's like a default to me but like i obviously went to school like i went to a normal school school. i went to private school actually normal school in like the sense it wasn't like an arts school right completely um but or you weren't privately tutored yeah, or, I mean, yeah. you are on set because it's yeah. the law. Like, if you miss a day, if you're really? if you're under the, I forget if it's sixteen or eighteen, but if you're under one of those ages, 
and you are working on a day you should be in school, mm-hmm. you have to do two hours of like school work mm-hmm. on set. And then do they do that? I'm guessing all at the same time. Is it like a classroom setting? No, or it, it is, it is but it's also kind. No, it's a classroom. It, right. It's not. You're not being taught anything. Like you, ha- you get your homework from school. And you're oh, like, interesting. And there's a tutor there to like supervise and yeah. answer questions and stuff. It's um, kind of like detention. Kind of. It's like you have it's, books and you sit quietly at your table and do your work. It's not unlike detention. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's except it's broken up because it's it's whenever you can fit it fit in. into the day because when you're younger you also have less hours you can work. Like, because there's no overtime for right. young, young kids. No, they just have to go home. Yeah. They, yeah. You, they, have you, they have you for like eight hours. Yeah. And then that's it. And that includes two hours of Tutoring. schoolwork. So it's just whenever you can kind of, but you have to get that two Bunch hours. a bitch. I'm yeah, trying I, to figure that out ahead of time. I rem- No, I remember it was like, like the day you turn whatever. When you turn 12, there's some, I think you can start One doing. thing kicks in. You can do like two more hours of, yeah. of work or something. <laughs> So when that happens, it's like we got you for ten now, kid. But like they wait, they wait on it. They're like, yeah. they're like, oh great, you can, like, it's better for yeah. the production companies. And like, I understand that it's not, it doesn't sound great. It's like ah, work more yeah, yeah. for the child. But I get it from like a production Completely. perspective. So I'm guessing we're talking about the exact same production here, but not saying the name. No, I'm. This is it, this is everything. This, this is, is everything. This is so commercials, everything, everything. I, I don't. I haven't done. I stopped doing commercials when I was pretty young. Smart. So I don't. Hell. No, I was lucky because I was working. Right. I was able to. Like, I auditioned for commercials now. Yeah. But I didn't. Like, when I turned like eight or nine, it, I was kind tough of day working of audition. enough. Tough day. <laughs> so tough. So tough. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. But um, no, I don't remember if I had to do it for commercials as well. I assume I did because I feel like that's the law. Mm-hmm. But I just don't remember. And I don't think I. And for certain things, like for. Void like for animation because mm-hmm. it's kind of quick. Mm-hmm. You can. It was more. I would just leave school for a couple hours and then come right. back. You've done a lot of voice work, haven't you? Like yeah, you did an Anne, Anne of Green Gables. I think so. Is that like ages ago? That was, oh, that was voice like, work. Years ago. Yeah, I did it a hundred when ago. Nelvana was, which was a production company that yeah. still exists, but they were really big in the nineties. Yeah. They did yeah. like all the kids. Stuff. Uh, like Care Bears and Arthur yeah. and all that stuff. I think maybe I'm wrong if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We no, can man. just like – they did yeah. Robin Hood, the Walt Disney classic. They did a bunch of uh, – bunch of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> Literally, if you had a kid that watched anything, Ariel, Little Mermaid. That's actually not – That I'm, was the one they did. Honestly, it, like obviously not Disney, but like if you were in Canada yeah. in the mid – early mid-90s and there was a cartoon on, Nelvana probably produced it. That's incredible. Um, And so it was one of those – I don't know if it was one of those things where it's yeah. like – you get in for once and they just keep bringing you back yeah. or if it was just they produced everything yeah. so I always work for them. But I kind of, yeah, voice work somehow just like sort of fell, I fell into it, mm-hmm. I think. Like I got one and then you get mm-hmm. another one, you get another one, blah, 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 blah. And it's, I love voice work. Uh, it's the best. Everyone I know that does voice work loves it because they're like, yeah, the hours are very manageable. Uh, you don't have to the, learn anything. You don't, the the crew is very, like, like you're only surrounded usually by a couple Techs, yeah, and maybe a couple, maybe you know, one like, or two other actors. Like a voice in booths. Direct, there's a voice director and tech people in the booth, and then maybe a couple other actors, and that's right? It. And that's which is great, and yeah. it's just chill, and you don't have to dress up, and you don't have wardrobe, and you don't have like any of that crap. Yeah, you can just kind of go great. and do your work and go home like a human being, yeah. So, if you're a voice actor, <laughs> hold on to it for dear life. Uh, we have a booth if you want to rent it. I don't know what's going right. $5,000 an hour, something will rent it to you. Sure. Well, uh, that you, sounds If you pretty... need narrators, no. <laughs> you, you can rent me. Jake, call 555-1212. Is that what you produce? No. Yeah. <laughs> 1-900 number. <laughs> Is that what this company is? What have okay. we signed on to? So we need Southern Bell. <laughs> yeah. Ha. I'll see what I can do. I'll give you the vapors. So I wonder if you want – I guess it depends on the character, whether you like hop a kid up on sugar. Because usually when I've gone to recording sessions, there's – like you have no, a you sweets don't. tray and you have like a semi-sustained tray. So you don't want the kid hopped up. You do. <laughs> I, I still remember. And like I don't know – I will never forget this and I don't know why. I still remember I was like eight, mm-hmm. nine, somewhere in there. And I don't know if I was hopped up on sugar or what, but like when you you have your script in front of you when you're recording, and you're kind of supposed to just like move the pages over, and I was just like dumping them on the floor when I was done, and then I just like left, 
and it's like it's it's so shitty. And you then put on I, your like two thousand dollars sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember being in like the sort of green room yep. area, and like the sound tech guy being like, "Can you come pick up your fucking pages?" <laughs> and I was Can like, you "Not be a little shit." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, that's." Yeah. A very fair and yeah, good yeah, point. And I yeah. did, and I've never done it again. But it's a thing that's always just stuck with me in my brain. So like, you don't want kids who are like flying all over. Right. You want them to be able to focus, focus. and do the thing. And because it's, you know, you record sound, like you want to get it. Yeah. You, you want to like, get done and you get have, like, out. A list of 12 people to do on the day. You want to yeah. get it as quickly as possible. Can I ask about Degrassi? Yeah, you can ask about Degrassi. So, in all fairness, I have not seen an episode. That's why we're friends. That's that's what Sean told me. <laughs> Sean said he probably only liked you because you didn't know that I didn't know that you'd been in anything. It didn't mean anything. That's not like, entirely true, but there was definitely. Yeah, a I hope I had a def- couple. I there hope was definitely a, a period qualities. of my life where that was true. Let's just go back to the situation. Like we, we can talk about that later. Okay, we can unpack all that get, friggin' baggage later. Let's just do therapy. But but how are you? How old are you at the time when when you're auditioning and you're getting it? I auditioned for Degrassi. I think I was. I got cast when I was twelve. I think I auditioned first when I was 11. Wow. Like, or I was like just 12. Because we shot, we shot the pilot in, I want to say like April okay. of 2001. So I don't, I can't remember how long the audition brought, but I was 11 or 12. So and where did it, where did it shoot out of? There's a studio that still exists um, down on, I don't remember the name of the street, but it's like, East, 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 like way. So further east than here. Oh yeah, way really. East, like somewhere like Scarborough-ish, I think. Huh, wild. Uh, and yeah, it's still and there. Your parents are picking you up and bringing you there, and yep. or I guess not picking you up. You're well, at you going first, from school. at first, yeah, parents uh, brought me at first because you know I was twelve, yeah. so you have there again in these labor laws. Yeah. there is an age where, and I forget the, I forget what age it is, yeah. but there is an age where like a parent has to be present because right. you're a child a minor yeah, yeah and yeah. then eventually you can kind of eventually it got to the point where like we had they had like a, a cab shit system yeah until like when i was old older it was just kind of like take a cab to yeah it's it's one of those things like i'm saying it like it's a normal thing and it's it, so it is weird completely no 100 no, percent. so weird i only saw that kind of treatment once a year at the company christmas party when they don't want us to drive and then are you i guess you're on you're always on a condensed shooting schedule so you shoot over four months at f- the at first it was like April to October ish. I want to say oh six months. Wow, yeah, I think it was six months. But like with a with quite a few breaks, right? Because again, because so, you're not going to do like five six days a week with a bunch of young well, yeah, kids we, we didn't and, shoot weekends. And amazing, uh, we usually shot through the summer, mm-hmm. but they do have like breaks because it is you know through the summer. I don't know what their shooting schedules became, mm-hmm. but when I was there, that was kind of the. Yeah, and then like obviously when there was more episodes in a season, it was, mm-hmm. shooting schedule was a little longer. When it was less, it was a little less. So. When I was eleven, and it's funny that I remember this so distinctly. But my dad grew up in Montreal, and so uh, he had moved when he was like seventeen to right around the New Market area, which is where I grew up, a little north of that actually. But essentially, this comes down to sports and how he was a Habs fan. And before I'm eleven, so up until ten. Like, you just do whatever your parents do. You right. don't know any different. But you have that – I'm at that point in my life that I distinctly remember all my friends at school were Leafs fans. <laughs> and I'm a Habs fan. And so I'm like, okay, dad, cool, peace. Uh, I think I want to start fitting in, right? right. Like, like, And that's just normal human behavior as we all grow up. It didn't work, I don't think. It's not like I left elementary school with oodles and oodles of friends. <laughs> so my whole like ploy to get, you know, understand sports in the Toronto marketplace didn't work. But when I think of it, and you just think of like groups and you think of, you know, yeah. people pairing off and then I would imagine it exists in a work environment too. Yes, yeah, so there's definitely some weird really fucked up dichotomies there. I, that, I like imagine. I'm that I've only started to unpack through like mm-hmm. literal therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's stuff you don't notice because you're no. just in it and yep. whatever. And, and then, you're just dealing with it because that's what kids do best. Exactly. Yeah. They just deal with whatever's exactly. in front of them. And it was fun too. Yeah. Like it was like going to TV camp because it was in the right. summer. It was like, we were, and like we got lucky as a cast. Like we all got along. Yeah. And it was fun. Yeah. So it wasn't all of these like very legitimate sort of Friendships ethical and, questions about oh, like right. how kids sort of process this yep. just weren't 
in the frame of reference. Right. It's not so late when you're like, oh. Yeah. yeah you're, that's, <laughs> that's not great. That's why I started doing that at that age. Yeah. No, yeah but completely. Kind of, yeah. But also it's like, you know, it's Canada, so it's a little less intense completely. than it is in the States. Yep. Um, but yeah, in terms of like friendships, we – like there were obviously people who were like some people are better friends than other people yep. and blah, blah, blah. But it was all pretty like – it was Chill. all pretty friendly, yeah. which was great. And, like, we were really good friends with the crew as well. Like, yeah. they, we all became close, which is also weird because we were 12 and hanging out with, like, 30-year-olds 30, 30 all the time. I've and heard like, that on more than one occasion. Just Well, first of all, a crew, especially when it's a long-running television show, they become a family in and of totally. itself because they're all usually from the same company or brought through the, and they the get same production. Back, and they get brought yeah. back because people just want to be around the same people, especially when you're dealing with... With a young cast. Yeah, absolutely. Because you want to create a, like as stable of an environment for them as possible. As we talked about earlier, you don't want to get them hopped up on shirt yeah. and be like, okay, now act. And from like a crew perspective, as like a 30-year-old person now, also like I'm from there, like it's steady work. Yeah. You get a show yeah. every year. It's yes. great. So, so the so it's there's also that kind of like I became very good friends with the crew. Yeah. And still am. I was gonna say, do you have you kept in touch with some of the crew? Yeah, like here and there. Yeah. We're not as close as we once were, obviously, but Completely. there's definitely people I still know and still am in contact with, especially yeah. with like the advent of social media and yeah. stuff. <laughs> but it's, it allows us all to be friends. All it the does, time. Yeah. but it's like there is something kind of weird <laughs> about being like, even when, a, especially when we got a little older and yeah. like it was like being like 16 and hanging yeah. out with 35 adults year olds. Yeah, and, yeah, and that being like, and like that was even the case even with me before Degrassi. Like there, when I was. Uh, seven. Mm-hmm. I was in Beauty and the Beast, the stage musical. Uh, um, Mervish? Yeah. At Princess of Wales. So that would have been 95? I, something like yeah, that? 96? 95, 95, 96, yeah. That's, so Mervish is in its heyday. Yeah. At, at the time. This is like, like when Phantom's still blowing up. Right. And like it would, yeah, Phantom would have been too. So again, I'm a little bit of a theater nerd. And I love Sorry, all this stuff. We're speaking the same language. And Durant, for those who don't know, actually there's... There's a really interesting there's a documentary on what was going on in Toronto in the 90s. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll talk about it afterwards. They're not paying me to promote it. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> it's been a hard day of edition. Mervish, sponsor uh, us. <laughs> Mervish, sponsor us, please. There was, there was the two rival theater companies uh, in Toronto right. at the time. And right. this is the 90s. Because Mervish didn't have Phantom. No, that was... Th- that was that was, Cameron McIntosh? Uh, no, that he was... He was Miz. His name is... Dylan, can you look it up actually while we're talking? You can you can Google. I feel thing. like it's a name I'll hear and I'll be like, I remember yeah, that name. It is. So there's two there's two rival companies at the time, and with all the money that had been put into marketing Phantom, it had really changed the game. Yeah. Uh, not just in Toronto, but really North America. Because in North America there'd only been Chicago was still kind of a B scene, but New York was clearly the big August, scene. Yeah. And and they talk and maybe this is the Canadian in me whatever getting into ahead of himself but there was a time when london's west end and broadway and toronto were all mentioned in the same sentence and you were in that yeah i feel time i remember like because we had sh- at the time it was when shows in toronto ran for a long time years like beauty and the beast ran i was in it for 11 months and it ran well before and well after that like eight I, shows a week how many were you doing four yeah because there's two kids playing oh, right. some role Everyone else ate shows a week, but yeah. for the please tell me you're Lumiere. Yes, <laughs> seven year old seven year old Lumiere. Yeah, <laughs> French accent. Very strange. Oui, oui. Very strange <laughs> yeah. accent. We told you said it was strange at the time. <laughs> I was an adult long before I had to be. Yeah, but to the point of uh, hanging with adults, like there was, it's no longer there. I think it's now a condo. But uh, across from the stage, stage door at the Prince of Wales Theater was a bar called the Acme. It was like a little pub. I remember it. Yeah, and that's where we would go after shows. And my parents joke about this all the time. Yeah. That like I'm pretty sure my eighth birthday was held at a bar because it was just like the because th- I was where we that's, go and, and that's where I was. I and I, we had a show that day. Yep. And that like I have one of my very earliest sports watching memories is the night I guess in the 1996 World Cup of Hockey. And watching, wow. I think Theo Fleury scored against the Swedes. I think, and but I watched it in a bar, yeah. like with, and like I was eight. Like it's, <laughs> it's one of those, and again, that's just where I was. Yeah, and it's one of those things that I say it as like matter of fact. That is just where yeah. I was, but it's also like that's weird, <laughs> and maybe not. I guess it was legal then, 
but probably not now. Right. Do you have it, Dill? I think so. The Live Entertainment Corporation of Canada. And who was it run by? Uh, Drabinsky. And- Drabinsky. Drabinsky. Yes. Yeah. He was. He's a very interesting fellow. Is it Garth? Garth. Garth I want to say Garth. That's okay. what I want to say. Wicked. Yeah. We're in the we're in the same wavelength here. Hell yeah. Uh, Garth Drabinsky, because he had climbed to fame with Cineplex Odeon. Oh. He he had done the whole Odeon thing, made it. This, <laughs> Dylan's just fact checking this, this as super <laughs> empire. Then he got, uh, depending on who you talk to, but basically he flew too close to the sun and then lost tons. Uh, and then was forced out by the board, and then he started building the the Toronto theater, or like he got on the Toronto theater right. scene, and he was the one that committed a whole whack of money to yeah, his Phantom ran forever, forever, and it did well. Yeah, well, everyone that was kind of the shadiness of all his business yeah. dealings. Everyone thought it was doing well, and then he also did Showboat. I think that was his. Yeah, Miss Saigon, Saigon was Saigon, him, was Saigon him was as him. well. Yeah. Right. He's the one that opened up the North York Center. Uh, no, right. no, Tron- Toronto. Toronto Center for the Arts, yeah. Toronto Center for the Arts, which is uh, the one that you were performing at That's when right. I came and saw your play. That's right, yeah. Wow. Well, I didn't know that was his. That makes sense, though. That, that was his, and I think... That was Ragtime, I think. Oh, was, Ragtime. It wasn't was Showboat, it was Ragtime. Yeah. That's what it was. It's crazy. crazy man. It's Who would have thought this podcast no. just be <laughs> talking mid-90s Toronto theater <laughs> scene? Da, 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 da. <laughs> You're in for a treat. You want, you want to go deep on Ragtime? Let's go. <laughs> Dylan, you're gonna have a lot of fun doing the show notes for this one. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> just put, it, just put whatever. There's like, yeah, there's like 15 minute gaps, and he's like, whatever. They just talk about talked about about garbage. Nothing. What was your question? It was, um, <laughs> yeah, fun adults. Yeah, no, becoming an adult. I don't yeah. know what the question was. I don't know where we were. were we in a question? I don't know. No, I think it was more of a conversation. That's fair. We were just kind of leading. Through I'll try to remember life. how we got there. No. <laughs> Sorry, right. I don't know. Tangents. How long? How long did Grassy run? I was on it for seven years, plus a day. I don't, plus a day? I did one day in the season after I left. Oh, gotcha. Um, to say goodbye? Like, no, it was, was just it like, a, like the, a cameo kind of yeah. thing. I'm unsure how long it ran after. Right, of course. I feel like it went a while. Yeah. Like, I feel like it only stopped like very recently. Holy smokes. Because I know they went to Netflix and a few seasons on Netflix recently. Did they? Mo- did, did a lot of that cast that you were with, did they all move on? Pretty it, much. Over the course of that. Pretty any, much. By, like, there was definitely a like uh, transition period. There's called, only like, so following. many years kids can stay in school. Yeah, like they they definitely followed a couple to like university. Right. But it was definitely like the transition. It's like Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Kind of. University years. Uh, I don't know how long like our – how deep like yeah. into it our generation went, but – I left after season seven and then did one episode in season eight. What was your relationship with your character? Conflicted. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, is it because you found a lot of yourself there or you didn't yeah. find a lot of yourself there? I mean, it's a couple things. One, I definitely found a lot of myself there. Yeah. And two, like my character was like the fucking nerd, you know? And yeah. like he was I, the, he was kind of the, not the loser, like he had friends, but it was like he was the nerd and the computer guy yeah. and like not the romantic lead so to speak and yeah. you're a teenager at exactly. the time exactly so like, like now that's fun fa- like completely now because playing, you can play a role yeah when you're you know 14 15 and that's what you're sort of known for right that's completely what recognize you for and recognize you as that's not necessarily what you want to be i had a hard time separating it from life like yeah yeah like i think now as an adult it's very easy to separate the two like there's the role and there's yeah. me and that's and sometimes it correlates and sometimes yeah. it doesn't and both are fine but when you're a teenager you can't you don't know yourself well enough to Completely. process that right and in the last thing I, so i grew up in a heavily religious household right and still there's your own unpacking that you have to do of course trying to understand that and understand where it fits and everything but you go through it and a lot of the people my age went through it at the same time where you're all like am i this thing that i'm a part of yeah Am I the things that I think? Am I what everyone else calls me? Am I the thing that I am trying to be, which is this other thing? Like, it's this weird yeah, and like, you have Venn no, diagram. And because you're so young, you have no frame of reference for Completely. it. Completely. So you don't know, like, these thoughts are having, you don't know exactly how to, like, I remember I became a very, like, negative, pessimistic teen. Really? And not, like, in a, uh, I, it, a lot of it, I would say, is for show. Is that where your humor comes from? I think so. Yeah. Uh, but a lot, I think a lot of it was like for, for show. Like yeah. it was me 
outwardly putting something out there being like, this is what I think is cool. Yeah. Um, whether it was or was, I have no idea. But it wasn't. <laughs> I like, went through that at like 28. I wish I got that <laughs> in my teens. But I didn't even get it out. It was like, that was like my identity for yeah. years as like a person. Yeah. But like the idea of how being on TV at that age yeah. and playing that character that age, how that sort of messed with my head, I guess. Yeah. I didn't, I, I started going to therapy regularly about four years ago yeah. and I didn't re- recognize it till then. Like I was yeah. well into my twenties before yeah. I was like, oh, maybe this is something I need yeah. to deal with. <laughs> maybe this did some not good things to my brain. Right. And it's this weird realization. I've been in and out of therapy since I was young. Whoa, there's a confession for you. Uh, <laughs> We're getting deep. Here. Wow, it got real. Applicable for, for marketing second. sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, you realize because there's a certain part of your brain that says, oh, this is just the way I am and this is just the way I look at the world. Yes. And then you get Absolutely. help seeing, no, 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 this is an effect that leads to a cause. And if we can work on even just seeing that bridge – then, then, then you're already several steps down the path. Yeah, like I don't think that it's uh, it's not like an affliction, but there is no. something to that, and there's definitely still like I'm not like I went to therapy. No, I'm an yeah. optimist. And everything's <laughs> great. Like that's not how I view the world at all. But, I do like, yoga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like it's I'm able to separate one from the other, and like being an older person right, who completely. has gone to therapy and like likes themselves yes. now, like. A, from I'm different like this is like not even when I was 14 like this right. is stuff that followed me till I was like 26 27 and like I am still not super comfortable when people recognize me but that has less to do with it used to be because I didn't want to be like it right. put me so on edge and I yeah. would like run away from it and like deny it sometimes like now I'm comfortable with it but I'm yeah. still not comfortable with it but I think that's the act of being recognized and not the larger connotations about me that it used to I be. found what I thought was the funniest thing, and you can punch me if you don't agree, <laughs> but it was it was the title of an article that said, Toby from Degrassi <laughs> brings the out- most outrageous snacks to Jay's games. And I howled, yeah. and I'm like, Sean, the fuck is this? But- I'm like, what? Like, just because Toby from Degrassi doesn't bring anything to Jay's games. Correct. Right? And that used to be a thing that I really fought against. Right. When we did the Drake video this summer. Oh, uh, the... Uh, I'm upset video. I'm upset. I posted a thing. Which is... What, we, can we talk so, about that after? We'll get, we'll it's so cool. It was the weirdest day of my life. When I posted about it, I was kind of saying... I said a thing where I was like, you know, I, I used to say all the time, and like recently, mm-hmm. that like if I'm 30 and I'm still just... Toby from Degrassi. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna like fucking kill myself. Right. And now I am 30. Yeah. And now it's like it's fine because you're not just. And even if at I, least and you... even if I am to like a large amount of people, I'm I'm more okay with that now than right. I used to be. Yeah. I used to really put like a lot of weight on having an identity outside of that. Yeah. And I think now that like my life was a little more stable, yeah. I'll be like, okay, well, I do have an identity outside of that with. My friends and my fiance mm. and my life. life yeah. But like if people on the internet or on the street only see me as Toby from Degrassi, that's okay too. Right. Like it's it, – it can be two things. It's not – like life is weird. You can – two things can be true at the right. same time. If at 15 you were hanging out with adults and forced to be far more mature than most 15-year-olds are, I will say at 30 you are at least 15 years ahead of me right now <laughs> because that is – that is such – First of all, a healthy way to look at it and even just approach it because we all have our days yeah. where we're like, oh, I, I, you know what? Most days I can handle this today. No, oh, yeah. And I'm just- not going to take it. But if we can approach it, that like if you can approach it that way, dude, I, I should study at your feet. But like I'm saying that also from like you're saying like today I mostly like talked about sports film on the internet and like watched Game of Thrones with my fiance and came here. Yeah. So that was like a, a nice day. <laughs> but that perspective doesn't exist every day. Right. Like you're saying, there are some days where you just don't have it and that's fine. Yeah. But the trick is making sure you have it more than not, I yeah. think. And again, like you're saying 15 years ahead, I don't agree with that because this is a thought I've had for like a year. Right. Like it's, it's, new, it's new for me. Yeah. That it's, and it's better. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. <laughs> I definitely prefer yeah. it. Yeah. But it's it's a new thing. So somewhere between when you after the end of seven seasons plus one day, <laughs> and 
when we met and you were at the score. Yeah. Again, you didn't say, hi, my name's Jake. I'm an actor. Uh, I'm known <laughs> for more than just being show. Yeah, I had such a tough day at the auditions. <laughs> Can someone please feed me my cookie? Um, <laughs> what did you did you decide to take a break? Did, yeah, well, because you had the score at that point. I which consciously you can... quit. Really? Yeah, I went to I went to university, and I went to Concordia, in Montreal. Makes one of us. And <laughs> I mean, I have an English degree. No. <laughs> Congratulations! Yeah, great. <laughs> really fucking useful. Um, I, I can say fucking one language. <laughs> <laughs> like I, so I went to school, and I was still sort of acting. But like yeah. obviously, I was in Montreal, so I wasn't acting through the school year. Yeah. I came back the next summer. So this would have been 2008 Mm -hmm. and worked a little bit that summer. And then after that, I just kind of, I was just kind of done with it, to be honest. Like I'd been doing it at that point for 13, 14 years. And I wanted to try being a, just a dumb university kid for a while who was still, you know, struggling with all the stuff we just talked about because I don't know if you know this, but university students get like to get really drunk and drunk Mm -hmm. people are fucking dumb. So if you want like bad experiences being recognized, just right. go to like a campus pub when you're uh, 19. Right. Because everyone's being asshats. Yes. Because they're all like drunk for the third time in their life. Exactly. And realizing they are not the coolest person in the world. So they want to make someone else feel like. Not that. everyone is a mental disaster. No. And, started, and started drinking at 14 so they could handle it. But I wanted to kind of leave it behind because yeah. it was it, all of these things that we just talked about were. This was like the height of its like volatility, yeah. I think, in my brain. So I just kind of wanted to get away from it. Right. And I don't think I, – I never like actually like told my agent at the time that I was quitting. I think I just – Didn't go to I things. Didn't. And I was living in Montreal for the right. most part and I don't speak French. So I couldn't work in Quebec cinema. Yeah. And then so I kind of just left the industry for like seven years. So I went to, I went to school and then moved back to Toronto. And then I think I – when I first came back, I auditioned like half-heartedly, yeah. but like I, w- I wasn't in it. No. And, like, yeah. I remember there was like auditions I went to where I didn't even know my lines. Yeah. So I was just like, I just, and like, I didn't know why I thought it was just like a laziness thing, but yeah. I think I just didn't want to be doing it. Right. Um, you were the kid throwing his papers on the ground. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You were like, Meh. yeah, kind of. Yeah. And then I just was sort of looking for, I didn't know what else to, I don't know how to do anything else. I just mm-hmm. started doing this when I was five and I have an English degree. Like, it's not like I went to school for Time. something. Yeah. You weren't a plumber. No. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so fu- in retrospect, I fucking should have been a plumber. No, you've been because, a funny plumber though. But at least I, that'd be man, great. Regular work be as a plumber. Hilarious. <laughs> that'd be awesome. But <laughs> we'd uh, have houses. Yeah. We'd be neighbors. We could. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so you ended up with the score. And so I ended up with the score. I, I had an uh, English degree, so yeah. I was like, I should probably do some like something involving writing because yeah. that's what my degree is in. Completely. And then I was just like looking for work, and there was a – I'd always been into sports, and there was an internship application at the score. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'll take a shot. And I, I will say I'm convinced that Degrassi got me that job, or at least got me in the door. I don't think it got me the job. But because, it got me, because the guy who was interviewing knew who I was oh my and brought me in for an interview. Thank God I didn't then, interview you then because <laughs> that would have been terrible for you. Yeah. I've been like, oh, this is he English degree. Exactly. Add another to the pile. And it wasn't like it wasn't part of the job, but I do nope. think it – th- another thing I've come to appreciate Degrassi right. for is it has unquestionably opened doors for me in right. my life post-Degrassi. Whether it's helping me or not, I don't know. Yeah. But – even going back to acting now, like having that breadth of work, yeah. I'm still kind of starting again, yeah. but it's not starting again as much as someone who's starting for the first time. You know what I mean? So I just like, I got the internship and then it just kind of went from there and then worked as an intern and then ended up in this small web editor team yeah. as a part-time guy. And that team was like Zoobs, yeah. Devang, Chris, Joey Cash. Like it was all the guys that we know now we all worked in this little team and the score was sort of a smaller operation at that point. Yeah. So most days, like we work shifts are like six to two with just like two of us sitting there being dumb. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> when the sort of TV and digital split yeah. happened, they, I was, had been an intern for the hockey for backhand shelf. So yeah. I'd been, you know, doing some work there and Bourne was moving to Toronto. Yeah. And then it just kind of was like, it was kind of like, hey, you used to talk on things for a living. Yeah. Or would you be comfortable being on the podcast? Yeah. And I was like, of course. Yeah. So that was like, I also knew from a very, like, I've always wanted to do like sports 
not sports talk. That's because yeah. I hate sports <laughs> talk. But like to talk about sports. Going to Mike in yeah. Peterborough. <laughs> Mike, what yeah, do you think exactly. of tonight's game? I, don't do well, I don't know. They're fucking shit. I can't put up with it. Hey. Better fire half the team. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan turns me down. He's like, we're done with Mike in Peterborough. <laughs> I was like, oh no, no. I already (laughs) asked this, shit. Um, But yeah, and then, but it was always like, when I was thinking of what I wanted to do, an actor, I, I, again, I kind of fell ass backwards into the score, and I was like, oh, I love this. Because at the time, like, we had all the blogs, so I could write kind of whatever I wanted. On 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 just about anything. And we were doing the podcast, and it was really fun, and I was working with my friends, and it was great. And then the score is sort of editorial mandate. Yeah, shifted, changed. changed, as you know. They got rid of the podcast, got rid of yeah. the blogs, and I just kind of we want twenty word articles. Yeah, it went seventeen hundred of them. <laughs> it went from being a job where on Sundays I would go in and run the Twitter during NFL Sundays and just like make jokes right. on the, <laughs> on the Scores Twitter account to like being like just tweet out that Sidney Crosby got hurt, and, right? And it was like, which is fine. Like yeah. if that's what they want, that's fine. But it wasn't you, I think. Yeah, yeah, completely. And I decided to quit. Probably should have waited till they fired me, in retrospect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I was story of my life, yeah. there too. And then when I was quitting, I was kind of like, I don't know how to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> the same question again. Yeah, like s- six years later. And then so I was twenty five, yeah. twenty four at this time. I think twenty four. And I decided to be like, ah, let's let's go give acting a shot as yeah. an adult. Yeah. And then here we are. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, exactly. Back talking about sports for a living because it's hard. <laughs> so first of all, some people might not recognize the names like what you brought up, Devang, uh, yourself, Zoobs, Sean, Chris. Yes, yeah, Sean, all, all, all these people that were at the score. But me having been where I – like especially on the digital side of sports in the city for like since 09, these for me are some of the – Biggest and most talented names oh, that I've watched, a hundred percent, and I couldn't believe that you all came from the same place. Yeah, the hiring Jamie Yuyama was our hired all of us, and his hiring instincts were spot on. Spot on. You can see it just in the friendships that developed afterwards. Yeah, that clearly it was the right group of people to execute what the mandate, as you said was at the time. So when you see these names or when you say these names to me and and I knew some ahead of time, others I met through the hirings at Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, which saw a, a small influx of score people move there. Sure did. And then I realized the talent level that we were getting and how they elevated our game where I was at MLC. I'm just like, "Whoa, you all are the score?" I think at it's once. Be- I mean, I think it's because they just kind of let us do what we wanted, right. to be honest. Like we are we grew our voices, so to speak, so organically yeah. that it, I think I think that's what it was. Like even I look at what Sports Soul is now at, compared to what it was five years ago, yeah. and it's better now because we've been like – our voices have grown. It's not – and it's not what it was. But the score allowed us to – It's you know, it's like anything. You practice mm-hmm. enough and things get better. Mm-hmm. But the score allowed – us to sort of like when the 2012 Olympic summer Olympics happened, they put me, Chris and Devang in charge of the blog for that, which is an insane thing to do. Tell me about but whatever javelin. I wrote like 800 words on speed walking because I was just like, <laughs> cause we were up cause we were awake at like eight in the morning in the office yeah. watching it. And I was like, well, it's what's on. Yeah. 2012. And so, that was London. Yeah. Yeah. When you are a sports writer, <laughs> does, a sports writer doesn't know anything about sports except what you except like Toronto teams, right. which is what I was, yeah, hundred percent. You're watching speed walking. It's like, all right, I'll write a funny, stupid thing about speed right. walking, and then which is like, really your perception of it, yeah. And that's what it, it becomes. This is what this is to me through my eyes, which really is at is at the heart of sports felt. And I, yeah, and I think that's what the score did so well back then. Yeah. Was it was very much from our like your the genuine eyes, perspective completely, and that is very much what I love about sports felt, which is kind of continuing that. Obviously, not writing it down, but yeah. it's like continuing that idea, and that's. Like we were saying, we're not giving you analysis. We're going to be like, this is fucking stupid. (laughs) Let's talk about mustard. (laughs) 
I love mustard, by the oh, way. Oh man, then you're gonna love this uh, show. <laughs> I found I found in my fridge, and it was still good, like a nice hearty grain mustard oh, I that I thought I was mustard. out of, and I found it just last night when I was putting is groceries that away. Uh, I don't know. I'll tweet you a picture. Yeah, later. Do. I'll let you know what it is. But I was so happy. I was like, "There's still half a jar left." I mean, I bring up the mustard episode of Sports Fit a lot because I think it's really because <laughs> it was two hours of us talking about mustard, but. It, it made me this morning when I was going through the old through iTunes. Like I didn't know that Zoobs had literally called that the mustard episode, and it's two hours long. It's unbelievable. It's just, it I bring it up a lot as because I think it's the perfect distillation of what Sportsfeld is. It's talking about sports for like twenty minutes, then being like, "Let's talk about mustard." Yeah, like, let's just, just okay. We got it. We we said the things, but yeah. what about this thing over here? Yeah, and how it applies because again, the weird thing is if you're not forced. And we brought up analysis, but I think the other side of that is being really hot takey, if that's a way. Yeah. Like where you're like, I got to be, you know, I know this about the thing. And I know that. And they got to fire the head. Right? Yeah. That's and not I, I can't thing. do that either because I don't feel qualified to be like, they have to run the Absolutely nickel not. defense. I don't know anything about Zoops that. Zoops and I had like a 20 minute conversation, I suppose, because we don't know how line changes in <laughs> hockey work. Where it's like, how do they know? <laughs> it, it's a full part of an actual episode. Line changes are the thing we don't get because, like, they how do they know? Yeah, how do they know? We don't play hockey. Is, is, is there is there like a light that goes yeah, off? Yeah, exactly. Like you see the red and it's light. perfect every time. No, it's, and it's like it's crazy. Yeah, until the times that not, you get too many men. In the yes, ice. exactly. Yeah. But then, like, what what went wrong? Yeah, what went wrong? <laughs> and then, when is it too many men? And when isn't it too many yeah. men? Because sometimes so touch the puck I can then, count six guys. Yeah, and I'm like, Ugh. but like, exactly. come on. But that, but that's what I mean. Like we're not, we're not qualified to give takes no. about who should, should and shouldn't do what. But I think that's kind of you were saying. Like we're not hot takey. Yeah. I would say we're reactionary, but Completely. in a different way. A reactionary that's not like yeah. it's like reactionary in a way of like our genuine emotions going through. Right. Like hopefully this podcast is still going in April and May, and when the Leafs and Raptors are in the playoffs, so there's only a couple months. There's going to be I yeah. So. I hope so. Yeah. There's going to be. Some emotional takes. Right, on completely. The show. It's funny. I should probably. I'm glad that I'm describing to you what it is and then you're refining what I'm saying because <laughs> I was the one that had to refine the press release that went out today. That's right. I was like, here, did Which, I sit also, down? The fact that Sportswell has a press release is fucking ridiculous. It's amazing. <laughs> like that, And that was also part of us being like, yeah, let's bring it back. We 100%. can exist where where Sportswell gets press releases. Completely. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we live in a world that we has press had releases. We a microphone no. last time. <laughs> We recorded on one, sitting around one microphone. The audio almost. was a little rough. It was pretty bad. But pretty you bad. had this great following of Toronto sports fans and, and some more outside of that that was, was is really endearing. Yeah. It is because because the relationship between yourself and Zoobs, I think throughout the episodes becomes really evident just in the way you're able to feed off each other and banter back and forth. And I think that's what you're talking about as well. Like with if your thing is relatively genuine, hmm. I think people will listen to it. It doesn't really matter what it is. No, it's but true. like if it's like people are interested in things people are interested in, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And if you're like talking about it from a perspective that people are like, oh yeah, I also share that perspective. Then it's like, yeah, okay, I'll listen to your show. So I don't know. Benchmark or, or like low bar. If it's around in March. Yeah. But you're like, <laughs> like a month if it's around in March, we can make six episodes. Yeah. We're doing all right. Uh, I want you to do one more thing if you don't mind. If sure. we look at the top five, it's the top five sports in North America. So you have MLB, NHL, NBA. NFL and MLS, MLS yeah. is number five. How are you ranking your sports? Which I think might be like just your personal like my preference. Personal enjoyment? It might weigh into yeah, you I, know the flavor of the def- podcast. It's definitely changed a lot over the last few years. To be honest, mm-hmm. I mean baseball is always number one for me. Always, always number one. Always will be. What's one of your quickly favorite baseball memories? I mean, obviously the bat flip was That's the best. Unbelievable. I was at, actually no, my favorite. I was actually at the 2016 wild card game. Where Edwin walked off the Orioles. You guys were there. Yeah, we were there too. That was that was probably the most fun slash least fun yeah. I've ever had at a live event. You know, we were waiting twenty plus years for playoff yeah. baseball. And yeah. then to be like I obviously I saw it when I was five, but yeah, to be an adult too. and like experience it was and the one game it was just that game was yeah. the worst, yeah. but it was awesome. Wild. It's very weird to me that like the crowded Jays games, people are like, oh, it's so crowded. It's like, it's yeah. did not, like in 25th, the bat flip year, yeah. you could, before like July, you could go sit wherever <laughs> you want. 
Like it's no one paid any attention. No, and they're not going to again, and that's fine. No. <laughs> and then they'll get good again eventually, hopefully, maybe. And then yeah. we'll see. Again. Hopefully. Um, be good but yeah. for Sportsfeld. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be very good for Sportsfeld. So first is MLB. First MLB. I think NBA is number two. Yeah, big Raptors um, fan. Yeah, huge Raptors fan. That's definitely changed my life. Hockey used to be number two. Yeah. Um, hockey kind of – I think working in hockey media really mm. sort of soured me on a little bit. Feel you. Um, and also the Raptors are just more interesting to That's me. Awesome. And the sport is so more – So dynamic. The sport is more interesting to yeah. me. Like I can – I've become a person who can watch any two – basketball teams but and I, enjoy but yeah. i don't think i could watch like san jose and nashville in hockey and they're good teams but i don't i don't give a shit. nice thing about basketball is i feel like i only need to know two players from each team also hockey true. i need to know more also like true. at least a forward a defenseman and a goalie that's three that's yeah that's 50 percent more than two and and so i feel <laughs> smarter <laughs> see i got the numbers i feel smarter watching basketball so is then hockey three i think so may have slid to four so I spent the first 25 years of my life yeah. hating soccer. Decried it as boring and shitty. I never watched soccer. Yeah. It was just the thing to do. Yeah. Now I fucking love soccer. Me too. It's all Sean's fault. I love it. But it makes two of us. I'm going to say it was summer 2015 uh, when, I, when I was living with Chris. Yeah. Um, and we were hanging out with Sean. The man who shall not be named. Not, shall not be named. But he knows everything about soccer. Yeah. So Sean. And it was just kind of like a crash course of a summer of like going to games, watching yep. games. So this is what I'll say for your ranking question. I was thinking about it as we were talking. Okay. I definitely care more about the Leafs than I do about any soccer team. Okay. But I think I enjoy the sport of soccer yes. more than the sport of hockey. I would 100% concur with that. Yeah. And I think I would rather watch good soccer over a random – not the Leafs. Uh, Le- yep. Leafs out. Yep. But like I would rather watch you know Man City and Liverpool than – the Predators and the Kings. You know what I mean? Yeah, no one wants to watch the Kings this year. <laughs> no, They're but, absolute garbage. But like, I think I think that's my answer. And Spurs, your team? And Spur- yeah, Spurs right. and TFC, of course. That, right. Spurs makes sense. Yeah. If you reference Sean and Chris. Yep. It, and I love, Holy I love right teams there. that never win anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Toronto sports fan. And then, Friendly fourth or fifth. Yeah. That's what the Spurs are I great for. I support the Leafs, the Raptors, the Jays, Spurs. I cheer for England and in no their national trophies. soccer. Just... <laughs> No, the keep on, them away. The only trophy was TSC, no. <laughs> and then they were dog shit the next year. So it was like this. This makes sense. This this checks out for me. Uh, and uh, NFL didn't even. We're not even going to mention NFL. That's how far down. Lo- I used to love how football. far down it is. I used to love football. Like in university, high school, I was all every Sunday, like all about football. And now I just don't give a shit. Yeah, like it's hard. Like the NFL is so awful as like an organization. Yeah. It's really <laughs> you can't hard. cheer for them. You're like Roger Goodell. It's really you're making it like, really hard for me was, to like. I was actually with this yesterday. I was watching the. Um, Patriots Pat? Chiefs game. Yeah. Like obviously I hate the Patriots as any normal human being should. Oh, well, and then but then they showed the like but then they showed the oh. owner's box of the Chiefs and it's like Stan Kroenke <laughs> right. and all these other like shitty billionaires. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> well this isn't better. Oh, that's the Ram that's the Rams guy. But like whatever. Like yes. the, the, every time they show the, the owner's, owner's box. box of an NFL team, it's like I can't cheer Which for you either. It's weird. It's the only sport. In which broadcast will go to the owner's box very, like very three, four, five times a game because we care what they think. Yeah. Well, but we don't. Like, it's like, oh, you're a terrible person too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like it's easy for me to be like, oh, fuck Robert Kraft yeah. and Tom Brady. Like, fine. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, Sam Cronick, oh, you, you suck you too. You suck as well. It's you, so, it's like, and it's just such an awful. It's equal opportunity about, of badness. Everything about the NFL the last <laughs> few years has just been like, like, Players, health, politics. Like, it's just so fucking terrible that I was kind of like, I can't do this anymore. And also the sport lost its interest. Like, I'll still watch right. the Super Bowl. I'm not, like, boycotting League, though. I probably yeah. should. But, like, I'll still watch Super Bowl. I still watch the games yesterday. Yeah. Like, when I still play fantasy football. Yeah. That's what I care about. I care about my fantasy team. I'm that asshole. You care about your fantasy team or you care about beating your friends? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's what fantasy always boils down to. I care about winning the money in our pool. I honestly don't care about players on 29 different MLB teams. I just care about beating my friends and lording it over them. Absolutely. Completely. Yeah. And so I follow the NFL as far as I follow my – but, like, I didn't even know the Cowboys were good until I saw they were in the playoffs this year. I I didn't even know they were good. I was like, huh. Okay. Football – NFL was, like, the one sport where – 
my allegiances could shift. Completely. Like, I was a Raiders fan first, then I became a Titans fan. Both great yeah. franchises. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> bunch I'm of winners there. Never going to pick a fucking winner. <laughs> Don't need trophies. <laughs> when I realized, as I got a little older, I was like, oh, I could just go from one team to the other and not care. And then right. also, I'm not even <laughs> watching the team I cheer for. It's like, I don't... I'd rather spend my Sunday doing something. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. I like the idea of all games on one day and yeah. just have a day. I get that. That's awesome. I love – I wish more sports did that. Because you can load up all the things in a one day that you don't want to do and it's yeah. great that way too. And I, I wish MLS would put all of their games on like a Saturday. Me too. And it would just be like – if They'll they did that, out. I would love that. I get the idea of sitting down for a day and you watch like 12 different games yeah. and you gamble and you eat shitty food and yeah. you, it's I great. I love that. I get it. But it's just – yeah, the sport – the NFL lost its – forget the NFL. The sport, I yeah. find, just doesn't excite me anymore. And I used to love it. And, yeah. now, and I don't know what it is. But I just don't – it doesn't work for me anymore. Sports failed. I realized I could be doing something else that day. That's actually – There's the tagline. That's not bad. <laughs> the show relaunches January 29th, January 29th. Uh, featuring Jake and Zoobs. And uh, probably there will be a guest. We're still a, a special guest. <laughs> you know, we're figuring. We're it a out. week out. We're still figuring. <laughs> also, there's going to be. You don't know this yet. I oh, think. No. Oh, uh, we're getting new news. We have yeah, new news. Awesome. Raptors Clippers tickets hey. up for grabs to one lucky listener. So That's cool. if you're into the Raptors, if you want to get your hands on if some you're tickets, really into whoever's on the Clippers now, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. That's right, Shea Hamilton. Shea's great. Yeah, Hamilton native. Right. So there you go. So you can catch the Raptors, the Clippers. All you have to do is follow at Sportsfeld on Twitter, at Sportsfeld on Instagram. And I never do this kind of promo stuff like in the podcast. I always do it before. So we'll leave you with this. I like to end the podcast (laughs) the same way every single time. And it's because I believe making big changes starts with making little changes. And the smallest, silliest thing you can do is remember to eat your vegetables. So from myself, Jake, Dylan, Luca, who's no doubt going to cut this, please, please, please (laughs) be good to yourself. And eat your vegetables? Is that what we're doing? What are we doing? That's exactly what we're doing. Was that the end of that? And eat your vegetables. (laughs) 